So I'm back here at the church in the playground, kind of a cool, cool place to hang out. I love coming back here and uh, just a beautiful day. So thank you for joining us online. We are so excited that you're here. And we've been in this series called Changes, talking about how in, in the midst of the world we're in right now, there are so many changes and transitions that are happening, but yet God does not change. There is nothing about him that changes. And so in week one, we saw that God does not change at all. We called it immutability. It's a big theological t term that just means God does not change. And in week two, we saw that God is not surprised by anything, and he knows everything. And that's his omniscience. And this week, we're going to find hope and comfort in God's unchanging love for those of us who are followers of Jesus. I don't know if you've seen the movie Hunger Games before. It's kind of a jacked up movie. Uh, it's a little bit of a Fortnite vibe where you're just trying to survive, be the last one standing, and a bunch of kids are attacking each other to represent their, their country, their town. And uh, in, this, in this movie, Hunger Games, we see a human example of sacrificial love. So Katniss, who's one of the main characters, her little sister named Prim is chosen to compete to death as a tribute in these games. Like, could you imagine sitting there and waiting for someone to choose you to represent the whole kind of area and section that you're from and you represent them and you have to lay your life down on their behalf it's pretty terrifying so Katniss being this amazing sister stands up in front of the crowd and volunteers as tribute she offers herself to go in Prim's place and so we see this love that is sacrificial and we see this love in Jesus laying down his life for us. So anytime you hear the word love, you might think of a love being just an emotion and even an action, but could you imagine if love was a being? Love was a person. So we believe that God is love. That's the very being of who he is. And this is from 1 John 4, 7 through 10. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. And this is what it says, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we may have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. So we see in 1 John 4, 8 that it declares that God is love. The Apostle John is describing this need that believers need to show love to one another because of the love that we have been shown by God. John then says that anyone who doesn't love others doesn't know God because God is the essence and embodiment of love. And God's love came first through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus. This God is love statement means that God doesn't just show love or feel love or do loving actions, but at the center of his being, he is love. When we think of the ultimate definition of love, we must think of God himself. C.H. Dodd had this, this quote that I thought was absolutely incredible, and this is what it says. If he, God, creates, he creates in love. If he rules, he rules in love. If he judges, he judges in love. All that he does is the expression of his nature is to love. Wayne Grudem, who I've been referencing in the Systematic Theology book, describes this love this way. God eternally gives of himself for the good of others. The Greek word used for love is described agape. This refers to the deeper love, the love of God. A spiritual, self-sacrificial love that doesn't depend on anyone loving him back. It is God's love towards Jesus and human beings. That is agape love. So we must keep God as love together with the unchangeableness of God. 
This reveals a God who shows an everlasting, never runs out love towards his people. I don't know if you've seen the movie Frozen 2. I watched probably half of it recently. But in this movie, we see this relationship between Kristoff and Anna. And they struggle as they try to figure out what's going on and this wrong kind of past thing that's been going on in their life. And Anna's mind is preoccupied with helping her sister. And Kristoff struggles to express his love to her the whole time. And at the end of the movie, I haven't seen the ending, but someone told me about it a little bit. Anna apologizes to Kristoff for not being there for him. And he replies with the words, my love is not fragile. My love is not fragile. In a small way, this is a picture of God's love. His love is not fragile. God's love does not change. And this is why the Apostle Paul stresses that absolutely nothing and no one can separate us from God's love. In Romans 8, 38 and 39, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. I just want to read it to you. We see this picture of God's love that cannot be stopped by anything or anyone, no matter what we're facing in life. And this is what it says. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we think that God can't love us or that we're unlovable to God, we are greatly mistaken about an everlasting, forever loving God. If you are looking for a love that never fails you, a love that is stable, does not desert you, even at your lowest points in life, you are looking for God himself, who is the very love we hope and long for. So if you're watching this and you're like, man, I don't know about this love of God. I feel like no one loves me in my life, my family, my friends, everyone's abandoned me. There is a God out there that I worship, that I love, He's a triune God of the universe, and he sent his son Jesus to save us. And so if you are watching right now and you've never trusted in Jesus, you've never trusted in the finished work of Jesus for, to be made right with God for the forgiveness of your sins, you could do that right now. And if you have questions about what does that mean, you can contact the church, you can contact me. I would love, absolutely love to talk to you about who Jesus is and this kind of love and grace that he shows to us, even when we wander off, God is chasing us, God is with us, and he loves us, and his love for us is not based on our behaviors, it's not based on what we do for him, but it's based on Christ and what Christ did on our behalf. And so I would invite you, if you're looking for love in all the wrong places, to find it in the person of Jesus. So thanks for tuning in. I hope today was a good time for you to just reflect on who God is, his love for you. We have some questions down below in the comment section, uh, description section. You can check that out. Feel free to reach out if you need us or anything. We, we love you so much if you're tuning in. You're as much a part of our youth group as anyone else, even though you're not with us physically. And just a heads up, the next two weeks we won't be meeting. We're going to go up to Fall Fling this coming weekend. Be praying for us as we go up there that lives would be changed and that people would come to know Jesus and grow closer to Him through that weekend. And then after that is MEA break, so you can enjoy some time together uh, with your family, with friends. Go do something fun. Hopefully the weather is great. And then we'll join back up the following week. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you then. Uh, with that, I want to just pray for us, and then uh, I'll let you go. But thanks for tuning in today. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are a God who loves us, and that love is not based on anything we do, but based on Jesus and what he did for us. So if anyone's looking for love in all the wrong places, may they find and feel the love of God today. God, you say if, you, if we turn from our sin and turn to you, that you'll meet us there. 
So I pray that you would do that for someone today. And thanks for doing that for me and so many people. Thanks for your love that it doesn't change, that it's not based on my behavior or me being good enough. And thanks for freely giving that. And may that change my heart and make me show love to those around me more and more as well. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.